transformations of exponential functions. So this is going to use our basic knowledge that we know of from transforming functions and our basic knowledge of exponential functions to graph more complicated exponentials. Um, here's what I'm looking at. We've already talked about our a value. Our a value is our y-intercept, or our starting value. Again, if there is no a value, if there is no a value, your a value can always be just 1 then. You can always just write a 1 in front. Your a value can also be negative. If it's negative, your graph is reflected. Flip the graph. Top to bottom. B, we talked about, tells you whether it's growth or decay. Definitely very important whether it's going up or coming down. And if it's growth, you're going to know that because B is going to be bigger than 1. It's going to be getting bigger every time you multiply by it. But if it's decay, B is going to be less than 1 and bigger than 0. Now on to the new stuff, this x minus c. The x minus c, because it's with the x, is going to affect it horizontally, meaning left and right. Now, if it's something like minus 3 or plus 2, when it affects it horizontally, remember that it affects it opposite of what our brain sort of thinks. And so this minus 3, my brain thinks, that's going to move it to the left. But in fact, with the x's, it's always opposite, and so the minus 3 is going to shift it to the right. Plus 2, always opposite. My brain thinks right. However, it's to the left. Now, plus d, that's not with the x, and so that must be affecting it vertically, meaning up and down. So in this case, if we have a minus 3 and a plus 2, if we have a minus 3 hanging out here at the end, that's going to affect it up and down, exactly how we think about it. It's going to shift it down. If we add 2 on the end, that's going to add 2 to everything and shift it up. So, here's what we want to look at for every single graph. Look at your B value. Is it growth or decay? Look at your A value. Is it positive or negative? Look at your transformations. Have you gone up, down, left, and right? Starting point. Look at your A value. And then shift your A value. Shift your starting point using these transformations. And then where is the asymptote? Starts at y equals 0 and then goes from there. So let's look at a couple examples. So this 4, again, is our y-intercept. And that's our y-intercept before the shift. So 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to stick that there for right now. That's our starting value. 1 half tells me that it's going to be decay. We're not going to get very specific with our 1 half, being half as much, half as much, half as much, because I'm going to specify that I'm going to want three things from you, and I'll tell you what those are as far as on, on a testing situation. This minus 3 is with the x, and so like we talked about, that's left and right, opposite of how we think it moves, and so that's going to shift it to the right 3. And this 5, outside not affecting the x, and so that must be affecting the y exactly how we think about it, and so it's moving it down 5. So everything about our graph that used to be decay, or is still decay rather, is going to shift to the right 3 and down 5. So this point was our starting point. It's shifting to the right 1, 2, 3, and down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so I'm going to mark this point 3, comma, negative 1. And we can erase this other one if you want, because it's not going to be part of our graph. It's going to be decay, but it's going to be a lot nicer to use a horizontal asymptote, which was at 0, but now has gone right 3, hasn't really moved, and then down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so here's our horizontal asymptote. Notice that it's still 1, 2, 3, 4 
above relatively. And so then just go from there. If you like to go from the asymptote and up. But so we have exponential decay. What I'm looking for is, do you know where the asymptote is? So y equals negative 5. Do you know what one significant point, the y-intercept plus the shift, right? So we took the y-intercept and we shifted it. And do you know the shape? Do you know whether it's growth or decay? Those are the things I'm looking for. Technically, we could get, have gone a step further and said, well, half of four, it's two above then, and then it's one above, and then it's half above, and a quarter, and a, an eighth, and so on. But we're going to stop just with this significant point, asymptote, and the shape. All right, on to the next one. The negative tells us that it's reflected, that it's flipped. Three tells us it's the y-intercept. Four-thirds is bigger than one. Yes, it's a fraction, but yes, it's bigger than one, and so it's going to grow. And this plus two, it's with the x, and so it's going to shift it left and right, opposite of what we think, so it's going to actually shift it to the left. Plus four, shift it up and down exactly how we think about it, so it's moving it up four. So, horizontal asymptote is usually at zero. It's gone up one, two, three, four. So here's our horizontal asymptote at y equals four. Our um, y-intercept was usually at one, two, three, but it flipped one, two, three. It's down here. Now we took that and we went left two, one, two, and we went up four. One, two, three, four. Notice how we're still three away from our asymptote. Last thing to do, we've got our shape, sorry, we've got our asymptote, we've got our point, which is negative two comma one, and now we need our shape. It was growth, meaning it did look like this at one point in time but we are going to reflect that and flip it over and so it's going to look like this. And there you have your basic transformations of exponential growth functions. Enjoy!